August 21st Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament The words of the teacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem Futile, futile, laments the teacher. Absolutely futile, everything is futile. What benefit do people get from all the effort which they expend on earth? A generation comes and a generation goes, but the earth remains the same through the ages. The sun rises and the sun sets. It hurries away to a place from which it rises again. The wind goes to the south and circles around to the north. Round and round the wind goes and on its rounds it returns. All the streams flow into the sea, but the sea is not full. And to the place where the streams flow, there they will flow again. All this monotony is tiresome. No one can bear to describe it. The eye is never satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear ever content with hearing. What exists now is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing truly new on earth. Is there anything about which someone can say, look at this, it is new. It was already done long ago before our time. No one remembers the former events, nor will anyone remember the events that are yet to happen. They will not be remembered by the future generations. I, the teacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem. I decided to carefully and thoroughly examine all that has been accomplished on earth. I concluded, God has given people a burdensome task that keeps them occupied. I reflected on everything that is accomplished by man on earth, and I concluded, everything he has accomplished is futile, like chasing the wind. What is bent cannot be straightened and what is missing cannot be supplied. I thought to myself, I have become much wiser than any of my predecessors who ruled over Jerusalem. I have acquired much wisdom and knowledge. So I decided to discern the benefit of wisdom and knowledge over foolish behavior and ideas. However, I concluded that even this endeavor is like trying to chase the wind. For with great wisdom comes great frustration. Whoever increases his knowledge merely increases his heartache. I thought to myself, come now, I will try self-indulgent pleasure to see if it is worthwhile. But I found that it also is futile. I said of partying, it is folly, and of self-indulgent pleasure, it accomplishes nothing. I thought deeply about the effects of indulging myself with wine, all the while my mind was guiding me with wisdom, and the effects of behaving foolishly, so that I might discover what is profitable for people to do on earth during the few days of their lives. I increased my possessions, I built houses for myself, I planted vineyards for myself, I designed royal gardens and parks for myself, and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I constructed pools of water for myself to irrigate my grove of flourishing trees. I purchased male and female slaves, and I owned slaves who were born in my house. I also possessed more livestock, both herds and flocks, than any of my predecessors in Jerusalem. I also amassed silver and gold for myself, as well as valuable treasures taken from kingdoms and providences. I acquired male singers and female singers for myself, and what gives a man sensual delight a harem of beautiful concubines. So I was far wealthier than all my predecessors in Jerusalem, yet I maintained my objectivity. I did not restrain myself from getting whatever I wanted. I did not deny myself anything that would bring me pleasure. So all my accomplishments gave me joy. This was my reward for all my effort. Yet when I reflected on everything that I had accomplished and on all the effort that I had expended to accomplish it, I concluded, all these achievements and possessions are ultimately profitless, like chasing the wind. There is nothing gained from them on earth. Next, I decided to consider wisdom as well as foolish behavior and ideas. For what more can the king's successor do than what the king has already done? I realize that wisdom is preferable to folly, just as light is preferable to darkness. The wise man can see where he is going, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I also realize that the same fate happens to them both. So I thought to myself, the fate of the fool will happen even to me. Then what did I gain by becoming so excessively wise? So I lamented to myself, the benefits of wisdom are ultimately meaningless. 
For the wise man, like the fool, will not be remembered for very long, because in the days to come both will already have been forgotten. Alas, the wise man dies just like the fool. So I loathe life because what happens on earth seems awful to me, for all the benefits of wisdom are futile, like chasing the wind. So I loathed all the fruit of my effort for which I worked so hard on earth, because I must leave it behind in the hands of my successor. Who knows if he will be a wise man or a fool, yet he will be master over all the fruit of my labor, for which I worked so wisely on earth. This also is futile. So I began to despair about all the fruit of my labor, for which I worked so hard on earth. For a man may do his work with wisdom, knowledge, and skill. However, he must hand over the fruit of his labor as an inheritance to someone else who did not work for it. This also is futile and an awful injustice. What does a man acquire from all his labor and from the anxiety that accompanies his toil on earth? For all day long his work produces pain and frustration, and even at night his mind cannot relax. This also is futile. There is nothing better for people than to eat and drink and to find enjoyment in their work. I also perceive that this ability to find enjoyment comes from God. For no one can eat and drink or experience joy apart from Him. For to the one who pleases Him God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy, but to the sinner He gives the task of amassing wealth, only to give it to the one who pleases God. This task of the wicked is futile, like chasing the wind. God, I'm used to reading this particular book in the Bible in other versions, translations of the Bible, uh, not from the Net Bible. Usually I'm used to it starting off, vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, and it's... For a lot of people, it's a pretty famous quote, and he talks about vanities throughout this entire book, uh, and and we think it might be Solomon. We're pretty sure it's Solomon as the writer, but whoever it is is talking about vanities, and uh, it's interesting because <laughs> until I read the Net Bible's version, futile, futile, laments the teacher, absolutely futile, everything is futile, using the word futile instead of vanities. Um, I had never connected the dots. Vanity to me um, was about arrogance, and and he is talking in various degrees about arrogance, about our world and being worldly in our kingdom. Um, but futile to me makes a lot more sense. Vanities, if you research the word, is sort of like a vapor. Yet futile comes across to me as absolutely no point to it. I guess vapor could to a, to a certain degree, but futile to me is, is a lot better word for this particular book of the Bible because what Solomon or whoever the writer is, is talking about, a, a lot of it has to do with everything of this world is nothing. We can go in and have the best of everything. We can have the best cars, the fanciest houses, the most amazing job, the most beautiful wife or husband, kid, whatever it is that our heart desires, right? And he says it's futile. There's no point. You can have all of that and you can have none of that and it's for no point. There is no point for the worldly things. There is no point unless you have God as part of it. In fact, the writer even goes on to say right at the end of, of the second chapter, for to the one who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, he gives the task of amassing wealth, only to give it to the one who pleases God. The task of the wicked is futile, like chasing the wind. One of my favorite verses in the Bible actually speaks directly to that futility or that vanity um, in other translations in 1 John, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride and possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. But God, it is so difficult 
to see this life as fleeting, to see these things as inconsequential. I'm really struggling with uh, quite a few things actually are on my plate at the moment, as you know. Um, we've been in prayer a lot lately. So a, a lot of unsettling circumstances and situations have either come into my life or re-entered back into my life. A and they're all for the most part, very worldly situations. Very few of them have anything to do with my eternal reward, spending eternity with you. Although throughout all of it, of course, I can reflect your grace and mercy, of course. But the situations themselves are incredibly worldly. My heart has gotten caught up in the worldly part of it. You know, that anxiety feeling and that frustration feeling, that worried feeling, that angry feeling, that jealous feeling, that agitated feeling, all of those things, all of those are worldly feelings and I know it, but sometimes it feels like, um, like I have prickly, itchy insulation wrapped around my heart and I can't see my way out of it. Okay. That's the only way I can explain it, God, but you actually know what I mean because you can see my heart. I struggle a lot with getting caught into the worldly things, the futile things that the writer of Ecclesiastes is talking about. I get caught into things that eternally aren't going to matter. I'm dealing with a really hard situation right now with, with someone I care about who is choosing fear very much over anything that you want him to do, God. Uh, he's not only choosing fear, but he's choosing to do a lot of illegal things along with that fear. And what's amazing to me is all of his fear is coming from worldly things. All of the things that he's afraid of happening if he doesn't do these illegal things are all worldly based feelings. And you've been so crystal clear in his life about what you expect from him, uh, what you want him to do, the path you want him to walk. You've given him incredible grace, incredible mercy in all the things he's done. And yet after all of that, I sit there and watch him choose not to be thankful and grateful and blessed that you have given him grace and mercy and forgiveness for the things in the past he's done but to go on and do them and do them in spades to do the exact same thing but only worse and my heart is shattered my heart is shattered because he is choosing worldly things that ultimately won't matter he's choosing the possessions of the world he's also choosing to intentionally hurt quite a few people as this plays out. Not to mention the justice that will come from you for doing something illegal and probably from a few other agencies here in the United States. God, the things of the world have such sharp barbs into our life and they end up with sharp barbs into our heart. And it feels sometimes like we can never escape them. We get so consumed and co so sidetracked and, and so emotional with some of these things that happen in our life. A loss of a job, uh, a divorce, uh, a, one of our kids is in trouble, maybe s health type of situations, financial situations. And it truly means, and I know that it means this, God, because lately I'm really struggling with this. I know it means that I don't trust you. Because if I trusted you, if I believe that you truly had my best interests at heart and knew that I deserve that as your child, I wouldn't be fussing so much with what's going on in my life. I wouldn't be so impatient at getting what I want, what my kingdom needs, I think, what my worldly view is. That wouldn't be agitating me so much if I just calmly turned everything over to you and said, it's, it's all up to you, God. Now, thankfully, and I'm incredibly blessed by this, incredibly blessed, you have given me a lot of peace in the last 24 hours from a lot of things. I did the work that you've asked me to do and will continue to do it, but everything else I've turned over to you. And I had to, otherwise I would have drove myself crazy. But I also had to because I do know ultimately you're the one who's in control of this. I read this amazing thing. I want to say it's from Piper today. I can't, one of the preachers that, that I follow. And it said, a speck of dust cannot be picked up by the wind and moved 
without you saying so. And I thought that's so amazing that even the tiniest little things that we don't even pay attention to are completely within your control. Without your say so, that little tiny speck of dirt doesn't get to move in that wind that comes up. And that wind doesn't even get to happen without your say so. And I know the same thing's true with this situation, this worldly situation. I know that if you want him punished, severely or lightly, you will make sure that that happens. If for some reason your will is to not see that punishment happen, at least here in this world, then that's your will. So I really love the book of Ecclesiastes, that futility that if we honestly completely figure out in our heart that all the things of the world are futile, that they gain us nothing. Watching TV, buying a, a brand new fancy car, uh, getting a bigger house than we should. Um, gosh, there's just so many things that are futile in our world, God. So many things that are worldly that are so acceptable of the world. And yet you've called us to not be conformed to this world. In Romans, you talk about not conforming to this world, but being transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God, help us to realize what the things of vanities are, what the futile things are in our life. And instead, help us to put all of our hope and prayers and energy excitement and wishes and desires of our heart into the things that you want for us the eternal things the things that are good and acceptable and perfect in your son's name i pray amen